Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for coming to see us. Uh, first of all, it's a great pleasure to have uh, Mr. Khalaf Hattur with us in Berlin. Uh, I know Mr. Khalaf almost, almost for 30 years. And uh, I, would, I would be very honest every time I said to Mr. Khalaf, I would get something new. A self made man uh, uh, who had built. Um, not only from 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 a, from a economic commercial perspective, but also the wisdom that comes with it in a, in, a, in, a, in a young country, and how much he participated dynamically to build it as well. Um, so um, I, I was talking to Mr. Khalaf yesterday. I said I have a list of questions, but honestly, with uh, with Mr. Khalaf, uh, I, I did not pass him any questions. So there is full freedom to ask. Uh, anything about you know about uh, about our, about our region about the UAE in particular about his personal experience, um, so we will make it uh, as open discussion as as possible. Thank you very much. It's my honor and pleasure really to meet you, gentlemen. And uh, I come from a country which I'm proud of. My country is United Arab Emirates, country, I call it always the land of opportunity, land, the land of the safe haven, where all we live there, a lot of, from everybody, everywhere in the world, and there is no discrimination on religion or color. We work together, with our, doesn't matter whether you are tall, short, black, white, uh, Christian, Jew, Muslim, who, Buddhist, we are all under one flag, which we are proud of that, to work together hand by hand. This is the great thing which we learn in my country. Thought, you know, to put this as step number one. We see rapid changes in the Arab world, especially in Gulf countries. Um, we had all this <coughs> progress in the UAE, you already mentioned, we see what was in 1971, as you see it today. Uh, but now we see changes, for example, with the Saudi Vision 2030. Is that a challenge for the UAE? As Saudi tries now to build up all you already have, and Saudi people don't have to go to Dubai or elsewhere in the region, Bahrain, um, for having entertainment, for going to cinema, to theaters, for having fun. Um, and also about ports which are built now. Is it a challenge, for example, what Saudi is planning for uh, Jebel Ali and then for your real estate projects? Well, I think, uh, I think sometimes, you know, when, we <coughs> you, when you build a base and the UAE is uh, the hub, hub between the East and the West, <coughs> this is historically from our great grandfathers who built that area and by nature it comes. Sometimes we don't plan it, you know, when there is a door closed, there are 10 doors. Now, I personally and my people in the United Arab Emirates with our leader, we are very happy for Saudi Arabia to expand. Spend for a lot of and to open for everything and very happy because we are at the end of the day, we are partners. We are partners. But still, you know, this is step number one. We are the United Arab Emirates, we are ahead. I had always, I said, we are ahead of every, not only, we are not building only construction. We are building, trying to build the brains, the people, to educate as much as we can our people and the resident of the country, which is really hard work for our leaders, hard work for our people. And we work with our leader as a partner for the, uh, the growth of the country. And the growth of the country is the people, I believe, on that, you know, and we are building them. And you will see the difference, you know, between everywhere. You will see UAE citizen, when he talks, everywhere if he comes to Germany, is different caliber than a lot of people, you know, because the environment there and the water maybe and the <laughs> dust we, we took in our heads educated us how to approach things on the right way. All of us, you know, you will see, we are representative of United Arab Emirates. We are the ambassador of United Arab Emirates, which is different. 
you know we are always proud and this is open always we appreciate we, we never make differentiation between whether you are a german or english or arab or 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 you a citizen we work as one team one family this is the success which will take a long long time for other country to do that you know it has been built sir but by nature our leader the previous leaders you know they built it sheikh zaid and sheikh rashid hard with our fathers and grandfathers also participated not only the two leaders our fathers also participated in this everyone in the country participated in this and the resident of the country participated in the success um, i think you come to germany quite frequently also, I'd like to know um, what you think of Germany as an investment environment. Um, well, uh, I come to Berlin. I visited some friends, you know, just uh, for to visit only and see this beautiful city and to walk a lot. I like to walk a lot and I enjoy walking. And you have beautiful road, uh, easy access to everywhere to every address. It's beautiful. Of course, sometimes we think of uh, participating in some business, etc. But this is, depends on the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you go to the um, German real estate market and the Berlin real estate market in particular? For the time being, no. I have to be transparent to you. Yeah. For the time being, no. If, if I may just add uh, to the, <coughs> um, maybe some of you know that UAE is the biggest trade partner with Germany for the last maybe six or seven years. Not only that, if you combine the entire Arab-German bilateral trade, almost 32% is with the UAE. Um, today also many German companies have a base in, U in UAE, but they serve much bigger territory, all the way to China, uh, you know. Uh, the regional offices. Re regional offices as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if I may ask another question, at the end of last year in a TV interview, you said um, in terms of expansion plans, you, um, you said in English, you wanted a breather, a rest. And is that still the case in terms of uh, investments abroad or, or economy? No, uh, no, to breathe in the uh, in UAE, because we have a lot of projects I did huge projects and then one time three huge projects and still some of them hopefully in two three months I'm going to finish it and I have to take a deep breath and relax a little bit which is not in my blood unfortunately <laughs> I want to relax but I cannot relax and uh, but for overseas we are open we are open because you know we choose the opportunity which is not giving me a lot of headache and in, in UAE, you know, I start from zero, construction, etc., etc. This is a headache. But now we have decided not to do that anymore because I have a lot of lesson, you know, giving me a lot of headache. Therefore, uh, the, if there's something ready, we'll look at it. But not to expand anymore in UAE. Anything in particular that finds your interest? In overseas or uh, in Dubai, in UAE? Overseas, or wherever. Overseas, we are looking if we have find, for example, hotels, uh, office buildings, commercial. Yeah, we'll look to these two type only. Commercial and uh, hospitality. That's our line. Yeah, we don't want to go to, th to throw ourselves on something we don't know. For example, IT. This is, I'm not qualified to talk about it. <laughs> you just mentioned a great success story of the Emirates. Um, and I was wondering what would be the greatest political challenges which could uh, endanger this success, economic success, in the region at the moment. Uh, UAE, you know, we are not the people who is uh, in love with war or in love with the turbulence. We try to avoid that as much as we possible. And till now we are very successful in that, you know, to avoid it, to try to avoid it to make our people comfortable and our country comfortable with the border, even outside the border. Um, we will continue growing. We'll continue because, you know, wherever <coughs> it happened, not only in the GCC, even in Europe, you'll find a lot of European unhappy of their situation in their country 
they move there and they live there and they retire there with their family and they work there and a lot of politicians as well they are living from all over the world there which they feel very comfortable and safe haven for them this is something you know is different i mean uh, the good thing in united arab emirates uh, the people and the leadership they are together hand to uh, hand working to the growth of the country of course something political thing sometimes leaders they take decision about it which is fine to us but you know the main thing is the economy economy controlling everything this is where we are people participating in that and we put our hand with them together for uh, you know to improve uh, our our country growth but we are not uh, uh, calling for war we are not supporting any war we are not uh, you know definitely unless somebody come to shoot you have to protect also but yes. you don't see any spillover effects from other crises at the moment like from which we have seen for example in Saudi Arabia no we don't really i mean I, i'm not uh, talking uh, i'm talking facts you know on our business definitely you know in 2017 the uh, the business wasn't that great like 2016 but uh, we can feel it now the beginning of january this year there is a growth and we believe this growth will continue you know this is what our calculation uh, in our business yeah i mean there is a lot of company this company international company they will not open their regional offices in the country unless they made a lot of scenario of of risk calculation mm. i mean uh, i didn't think this big giant company from europe or america will open any of there unless they made several scenario to look at it you know whether uh, it is safe or risky there is a risk everywhere in the world but sometimes we have to accept that risk mm. uh, yemen war sir this is and i call it antibiotic you know when you get sore throat and uh, you know you have to have antibiotic and I, i was writing a lot from 13 years i don't know whether the books here my anybody listening mm. and to warn the world to warn the world that we have to cut the head of the rattlesnake there before the rattlesnake comes to us but the world did not listen to khalaf al haftar <laughs> Maybe they don't care about Arab Labta, they need one tall guy, maybe they will listen to. <laughs> and you know, this is why we don't want this dangerous to come to UAE, you know, or Saudi Arabia or GCC. We are trying to finish there and not, we are not creator of war. We are peaceful. We want to help. You know, we are number one in the world of charitable to help the world, you know, the world. And the great thing, sir, we are not saying this is we want to help muslim or christian or Jew, anybody when there is a disaster for example earthquake anywhere we don't look to what is the background or culture of these people we go and help this is we learn from our our grandfathers great grandfathers and our leaders you know this is what is really opening for us Definitely, we are not looking for war. We don't want war. We don't want this. We want peace. We want. We are ready. Our our Saudi Arabia and UAE ready to to make a peace for the many. We are uh, we are not part. We are supporting the official and recognized government to live there. That's what uh, really uh, our leaders in Saudi Arabia and uh, and UAE. You are a very diversified. Yes, sir. In the rest of the world, the strategy of many companies is core business, core business, core business. This is just the other kind of strategy. What, what would you say is, is better? Your approach, be a big conglomerate, very diversified, concentrating on core business, like a lot of investor companies are doing? Well, no doubt, I mean, uh, the, the, the Western company, they are giant. We are a drop in the ocean compared to them. But, you know, I believe in something, I created this. I created diversification for, I think, I'm not uh, that genius. I, I convert that is because of risk impact. I say always, if there is risk 
in, for example, car leasing, I can carry it with the other company. Because if I run only one company and there is turbulence, then I cannot support that company. You know, this is a backup. I call it backup mm -hmm. for each thing, so, which I believe diversification is better than continuing one line. Provided you are aware of this diversification, at least you know 20%. Not, uh, not 100%. I mean, I cannot claim myself, I know about my company 100% to run them. I have people to run, of course. I give them the way I want them to run it, how they, wa they want to run it. I'm not bringing people to expert to show me how to run it. I, you know, I want them to go conventionally, like the way I run my, uh, my life. That's what I do, you know. You never worked, for example, with uh, business consultants like Foster Consulting Group or you know, never. 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 Because I feel sometimes maybe I'm proud, you know, I feel sometimes better than them. <laughs> 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 maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Would you say there is an own Arab style of management? Uh, I don't know about that, but mm -hmm. that's then I call it Khalaf al Habtur type of management. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have life, you know, <coughs> we call it uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. Discipline of life. If you plan yourself, you know, as. <coughs> then I translate that discipline of life is constitution of God, which, you know, you know the timing, sunrise, what time the sunrise, sometimes sunset. How, what time you have to be at breakfast, lunch, and dinner, etc. This is me, you know. I, I, you know, I meet at 7.30 with all my directors, 7.30 in the morning. I am in my office quarter to seven. I have my breakfast at six o'clock. I mean, this is me, as you know, they told me you are like a robot. <laughs> but this is what I enjoy. It. I feel hungry in the morning, I want to eat. I want to eat lunch at 12 o'clock. Dinner at 7.38 maximum to bed before 10. This, that, I mean, that's I program myself. They tell you you're not, you become like computer. I said, maybe this is a German computer. <laughs> in the field of real estate, do you see a lot of changes? <coughs> in the UAE, we saw this kind of, it's not just the merger, it's starting some kind of merger between Imar and, what's the other name? Oh, I forgot it already. Dar. No. Dar. Well, I am not in that area, to be honest with you, you know, and uh, always I said, I'm not against building buildings, but I am against to build without study. And uh, I mean, a feasibility study for any project should be done, then, and I believe from the four big company and they have to be responsible about their feasibility study as well whether it is positive or negative also i, I said that you know in so many <coughs> interviews that the bank should be also hold responsibility i don't want uh, xyz he want to do a project let us say one billion dirham or dollar or euro and later he is in trouble bankrupt and then he will go to prison no, and I will hold the bank and the company responsible because these two, they are authorized their funding. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about expansion on building, yes. Unless will studies will verified, verified by independent body to see how, how it's, which direction they are going. But is there still space for growth in Dubai? We said every time a new quarter, Marina <coughs> is going to Jebel Army and it's going further on. When is the point that that's enough? <laughs> Dubai is unique. Dubai is unique, you know. Uh, if I talk about United Arab Emirates, it's different. When I talk about Dubai, it's different. Dubai is unique, you know. It depends on the, in the place. It depends on in where you are doing this project. If you are doing it in the heart of Dubai, it is great. If you are doing it by the water, it's great. And doing it by the marina, it is fantastic. But if you are doing it somewhere else, I cannot comment on that because that's not my line at all, and which I will never ever support it. And I built a polo resort. 
Polo Resort, you can drive from, I call it uh, now becoming as a center of Habtur city, to that to take you 15 minutes. And that desert used to be desert, dunes where the camels, everything there. Now you go there, you think you are in a Germany countryside. German countryside. All green, etc. About over 500 horses. <coughs> People learning, show jumping, dressage, riding, polo. Fantastic. I mean, you don't think you are there. This is the project I did. But I did it because I enjoy it as well. And I know it will make money. If it doesn't make this year, it will make next year. Next year, th th third year. So there is a lot of potential. You see people a lot coming to stay in the small hotel, the resort, plus a lot of people riding horses. I mean, this is what we need more than building an apartment, renting or selling an apartment. We need something to attract people, something which we don't have. But now we have. If I'm right, the Saudis also want to get more tourists coming in in the next few years. So is this a challenge for the Emirates? No. We will not be affected at all, I can promise you this. And uh, Saudi will still come to UAE because the facility we have, it will take a long time they do it. It's not easy. Not easy to build things. It takes years and years. And to, to dig now, a foundation and to dig to make a basement it takes you three years to make a drawing it takes one year approval you need one year you know to need at least to build at least from 10 to 20 years I am that's my business I know how to do it at least 20 years you you are free day and night very safe and the safety we have thanks God I mean you cannot compare it with anywhere in the world everybody is safe there Everybody, whether you are coming from Africa or Asia or from the moon, you are one of us. And this is the great thing in the country. Just to put numbers on tourism, uh, uh, last year UAE got about 21 million tourists, almost about two-thirds of this uh, to Dubai, one-third to the rest of the Emirates. Um, German tourists is about 750,000. That's grown. It's a fast-growing thing. The, the good news is that many of those tourists are repeats. People who've been there and want to go back, which is, I think, that's also a story by itself. That's right. I met some people, family, uh, family, they're Hungarian, Hungarian family. Every time I saw them run our hotel, which is the beach, Haptur Grand Hotel by the beach, and I play tennis every day, and they come there, hello, hello. Hello, I said, I saw you last month. They said, yeah, every month when there are three days, we come to Dubai. Imagine that. <coughs> cheap flight, cheap hotels, very cheap. The hotels in the country are cheaper than anywhere in the world, you know. Well, I mean, one thing I, I learned here the last two years, <coughs> Germans love to travel. I mean, they would travel. What destination? I mean, they may change the destination, but it is it is a nation that really in love with traveling, exploring the world, etc. We get uh, so, but also we've seen also Germany uh, try to go to smaller Emirates, Ras Al Khaimah, for example. They got last year 110,000 uh, uh, German. Now with the people who go on Ras Al Khaimah, they are not the same people who are traveling mainly to Dubai. They're different, uh, I would say. They're looking for maybe something different. I was one of them. You were? Yeah. Okay. You enjoyed it? That's good. It was on the way to Oman, the northern part of Oman. <coughs> northern Batum, send them, I see. Yeah. I asked you about the, your opinion of the general trade environment in the age of Trump raising trade barriers and so on. Probably question. Um, your region of the world that's not directly impacted by what we're seeing between the US and China, the US and Europe. But I'd be very interested to know what your general opinion is about. Well, um, I think I think uh, President Trump always will take a qu quick decision, you know, fast. And uh, definitely, this is not the benefit in my, my 
opinion uh, with respect to everybody, I don't think it's benefit to the Americans. I mean, we have to remember something. Europe is big, and China is the biggest country in the world economically and the wealthiest. So if China tomorrow will put a barrier and put tax, and they are, they announce it, America will lose. Well, and I have uh, a lot of issue with the President of uh, Trump. And, uh, <laughs> and I wrote an article at the beginning. I said, we are fed up from the politician. We need a businessman. And when he announced his nomination, I said, that's good. That the nomination of Trump will create a lot of positive business to the world. I was so happy, you know, to be the man we need as a successful businessman. Doesn't matter if there is any dust here or there, you know. And uh, after that, I was delivering a speech in D.C. Uh, for decision makers. And we were talking, etc., etc. After that, I went to uh, my hotel and then I left to, when I arrived to London, I think, or uh, mm -hmm. somewhere. And uh, immediately he was announcing he hates Arabs and Muslims and this, I said, this shit. <laughs> I was talking highly about them. Then I wrote an article, you know, I hit him very hard on it. What <laughs> about his business projects in the UAE, for example? These, uh, he doesn't have. He doesn't have. He doesn't it is all franchised. He takes commission and franchise. He never spent a penny. You know, whoever t tell you he is spending, that's not true. He never spent money. They use his name. Uh, people, I don't know who are they, and uh, I think uh, this is the only thing they are doing. But does it bring something, benefit? Him? No, him, yes, yes for sure, but uh, I, I mean why? For example, if you would open a golf resort with the name of Trump in Germany, who cares? It would be a very lost place. Uh, no one would go. Uh, yeah, uh, even even there, I don't think a lot of people will uh, will appreciate that, you know. And uh, but some people they try to use, you know, they consider a successful businessman and now preserve United States of America to use that name, you know. And uh, I don't know. I will not do that. What about the Chinese influence uh, in, in the Arab region, especially in your, in your country? Is it increasing? I think, I think you know, I, I, I was surprised myself, you know. Uh, I met uh, the, the, the Shanghai company chairman and chief executive in New York by accident, you know. And they don't, you know, they know they are spending billions and billions, hundreds of billions in investment in New York. And there is no return. And I asked him, you know, well, I invited him. He came to Dubai. I said, I want to show you my country. And we showed him when he see Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And he was shocked. He said, we haven't thought about it. I said, we are your neighbor. America is not your neighbor. Come see here the land of opportunity. Now they are thinking to open. How would they believe to invest in the big countries? And there's where they cannot make money. But maybe they have their own policies. But where are you invested in the U.S.? <clears throat> I, and I bought one property only in Springfield, Illinois. I'm supporting some universities there. And I was staying in, the, in another hotel. And I saw this hotel carrying a very important name for me, the name uh, President Abraham Lincoln, which I'm always I read about him, and uh, you know, and I, I love that name. I bought it because of the name, to be honest to you, and making money as well. We support some universities, you know, in Illinois, like uh, uh, Illinois College, and we made also food bank. Because I was surprised, you know, there is more than 40 million. Imagine that in the richest country in the world, over 40 million under the line of poverty in America. And these people, even one meal they cannot eat sometime. I started in a fund for a great friend of mine. He is getting very old now, called Congressman Paul Fendley. Maybe you could Google, you know who is the man. Paul Fendley. Paul Fendley, one of the greatest Republican men, you know. And he is from that part. I made a fund for, to feed 4,000 children at school. 
you know, from, you know, imagine that I am uh, the American, and the American, the richest people in the world. And there is people, I went there even behind the kitchen to serve uh, the poor people, and the people who is homeless, some of them, and all of them American. You know, they don't have even one meal a day. I went to the kitchen with the Americans, I sat in the back, and I start, you know, filling for them and feeding. You know, and, uh, you know, there, because, I mean, I'm, I didn't go there to promote myself. I, do, I went there to help. And this is the policy we learn from our leaders, you know, that we do, doesn't differentiate between people. You have investments in, in London. I'd like to ask you about uh, the London, how you view the London real estate market at the moment, and how you may see it. Well, since a long time, I used to have some property. I sold them a long time ago. But now I, I bought a new property, which is Hilton Wembley. A new building, new hotel, Hilton Wembley, which is uh, doing OK. And uh, it is a beautiful hotel, and I'm very happy about it. <clears throat> but I'm very happy about my investment in Hungary, in Budapest. I bought two hotels there and two office building, and they are doing very well. The four places. <coughs> One of them is the Interconti? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Intercontinental and Ritz Carlton. Why, why is return so good in Hungary? Why do you have, what is it making it so good? I think I, I bought them the right time. Yeah. Before, a lot of people doesn't know where is Hungary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, when, when did you enter the market there? When did you enter, when did you buy those? Why I bought uh, the hotel Limeridian they called before, and then I converted to the Ritz Carlton. Um, maybe eight years, something like that. Okay, so before the kind of current. Yeah. How do you find the business environment there, though? I mean, it's in Hungary. Yes, it's a it's a much more uncertain place than uh, <coughs> you were, you were singing the praises of the stable business environment in much of the rest of in Europe earlier. Um, to, yeah. Hungary is a much more, uh, how should we say, um, is a is a much more authoritarian place, shall we say? Does, does that is that an issue for you? Uh, to be honest to you, I mean. We are doing very well. We have no issues with anybody, and we don't want to be involved with anybody. We don't want to involve about their politics, mm. or any 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 strategy they have. Mm. We work hard. People before when I came there, there is only people with the bike and the bag in the back. Now you can see people with suitcase, mm. which is good. Yeah. You can see uh, people with the families, with the children, mm. which is good. They can spend in the country, you know, and. Uh, uh, there is a, I mean, major improvement, and it's a beautiful city as well. Safe, very safe. Yeah. The food is good, and the street, I mean, they need a lot of investment to, to do the architectural, which is so beautiful. Yeah. Really, I like, I like Hungary, it's beautiful. The people is good people. I mean, uh, you are welcomed, you know, all the time. You will not see anybody, you know, uh, unhappy about you as a foreigner. Nice people, nice people. I, I'm sure you have been there. I lived there for a long time. I just really? Mm -hmm. What you were doing there? I was a correspondent there. But, uh, ah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. You saw Intercontinental, uh, of course. Of course, yes. And uh, there it's um, Le Meridian before. I do remember, yes. That was a near uh, Kambinsky. That was in the old secret police headquarters. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't tell anybody about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 They told me they want to show me the banquet downstairs. I said, no, that, one, <laughs> that place where they interrogate people before. <laughs> you said? Do you have any investment in Germany? No, I don't have really, but uh, if there's always, since very long time, I come to this beautiful city, Berlin. Really, I mean, I love Berlin because of the environment, of the garden. Everywhere is a plant. I mean, you walk in a garden. Even you are in the... Uh, and uh, we were negotiating some project, but unfortunately, you know, this happened everywhere. It does, it does not work. But a lot of uh, companies like yours from the region are invested in, in Germany. A lot of the major hotels are held by uh, big companies. companies. Yeah. And these people, even they don't make money, they don't sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think you don't make money? 
Maritime or the, um, what is it, Marriott? Uh, Where? Here, Berlin. Berlin? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest to you. But uh, I know, I mean, for example, Waldorf, uh, which is owned by uh, people from my country, I remember unless they sold it already, uh, that time they told me they are not making money. I told them, give, uh, sell it to me at half price, <laughs> then we make money. <laughs> you have a lot of investments in, in the hotel business. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of in hotel investments. Why don't you create But to be, hon to be honest, sir, I'm fed up from hotels. Headache. Mm -hmm. Headache. Headache and complain and uh, fight between uh, the owners and the management. Always headache, headache. I mean, to be honest to you, I prefer that you know other business or commercial better than the hotels. If I get some, somebody will buy them. I'll sell them tomorrow. <laughs> That's very true. I'm, I'm uh, very, very transparent. I mean, some hotel management you can salute them. You don't see them. You don't hear anything. But some people. We face a lot of problems. Because they grow big and they cannot manage. Some of the hotel management, you know, they grow big, big, big. We are human beings, you know, we have a limit. I can manage this and this and that. But I cannot manage every, every unit. And, you know, whatever profit we make in the group, we re-inject it again, you know. Plus, uh, we use uh, local banks. So your bank loans actually... Bank, yeah, we use local banks. I don't want to tell you no. Okay. Everyone, even the United States of America, taking loans. <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> so you basically, you, 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 you self-finance broadly and you don't, you don't actually issue bonds of any kind? Or we, no, we borrow from local banks. Okay. Yeah, we borrow from local banks. Okay. International Bank is not anymore the quality we used to work with, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, local bank now becoming very, very strong, very, uh, I mean, you, you can see the quality of people is different. What is, when you say the quality is not as good as international bank, what is missing? I have no idea that people, I mean, that 10 years ago we deal with the international banks, you know, if we want to do a project. Now, we see the quality of the local bank more stronger and more high, higher quality. In my view, maybe the view will be different. B banking sector is very strong in UAE. Yes. In fact, about four years ago, I was in telecom, <coughs> and um, Forbes magazine, they were uh, awarding like top ten businesses in, in UAE. I was the company I represented was one of them, the Salat. Uh, out of the ten, eight were banks, and majority were local banks. This is uh, how how well they are doing. So the finance sector, in anyway, is quite uh, yeah. doing very well. Well, it was under, under strong pressure during the yeah. economic crisis yes. in Dubai yes. because they were all overloaded by uh, real estate loans. No, that was post two zero eight. That was post 208. Um, are you um, perhaps interested in acquisitions or other M&A business going forward? If I go to IPO? No, no. Uh, if I've understood you correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, sir. You're not interested in an IPO? Um, it depends on the timing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry yeah. It depends on the timing. I mean, I might not go by Al Habtur Group as total because it's big. Maybe uh, portions. So it's still open. Yeah, it's still open. Yeah, but on the right time. And is it, have we got the right time or? Not now. No. no. Maybe after two twenty something like that. <coughs> Let us say after three years, look at it again. <coughs> the same. Service, 30% that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, not more. And what's the rationale for, for an IPO uh, hmm? What's the rationale? What, 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 why would you embark on an IPO? I didn't quite understand. Sometimes the IPO, I think, uh, 
in uh, a lot of cases and uh, you know if it stays like a family you know maybe after the death of that person they might make a dispute between the children and then you will kill the name of the company but if you go IPO then it will continue possible more continuation than if I'm just assuming that you know which happened everywhere in the world when the captain something happened then they fight the crew it's a big issue in this country with all the uh, privately owned yeah. uh, mid-sized companies the problem of uh, passing on the company once. yeah but usually in the Arab world there is this kind of passing to yes. the other sons yeah not the elder son to every to all the children <coughs> Yeah, but uh, it happened, you know, most of the, these children, they have disagreement, you know, who will manage, who will do this. Somebody said, I don't want to share, I want my money. And then they kill what you built over the years. You think your children will do this? No, my children and I grow them dif in different way, but nobody think, you know, it will happen later. You cannot... Uh, <coughs> You cannot guarantee anything. Do you think after what happened uh, in Saudi Arabia in November, um, Prince Al Walid will sell his um, hotel businesses in Paris or his uh, shares in the Accor Group and so? Well, I think he's in the Four Seasons and uh, Accor and a lot, a lot of companies. Walid bin Talal and I, I met him three times, briefly. He is genius. He's genius. He will not make all this money from the bank, city group and others, you know, he makes his money from the bank in the beginning. And uh, he's like a machine, 24 hours to work, this man. You know, I cannot compete with him, you know. But uh, to be honest, you know, I don't know what's his plan. It's very difficult to uh, assess him, you know. What is his plan? And uh, when he's going from Saudi Arabia out to see what's happening, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I cannot comment on that. But how much this circumstance in Saudi Arabia hurt the business environment? Excuse me? How much these uh, circumstances, these kind of arrests in November until January or so? Uh, hurt the business climate, the, the investment climate in the kingdom? I think this is, they know it more than I do, you know, I don't want to make any comment, something I'm not aware of it. But if I look at it from outside, you know, as, you know, from distance, uh, I didn't think it's right. I didn't think it is right from distance. But I didn't think they will take that decision, which is tough and hard decision unless there is not only ground, hundred soil and ground for that. Otherwise they will not take that, you know. Definitely they have they have ground to take a decision. And they make of course there is calculation of risk and they know that risk. But would you be interested in investing in Saudi Arabia because of the opening of the country of the uh, opportunities in the tourism sector and the real estate market which is now beginning to start. Is it an interesting market for you as an investor from the UAE? Well, uh, as I said earlier, I want to take b deep breath first, you know, uh, for a while to relax. deep breath in the UAE, but not in the Yeah, <laughs> deep breath. <you> know. <laughs> it's abroad. Yeah, I know, sir, but... Uh, but UAE is the place which, you know, I'm, I feel more comfortable and more safe, you know. Sure. Yeah, I want to relax first. I will try my best to relax, you know, I cannot guarantee that. <laughs> Start to play a more, I guess, active security role in the world. I mean, it was notable that uh, former foreign minister was, uh, was down in Qatar um, trying, to, trying to mediate in the, in, the, in the Qatar dispute a while back. Do you, I mean, is that something you sort of, is that helpful in the region, do you think? Germany trying to play a bigger role. Um, uh, it's always been the country, it's always been quite a reticent country, very reluctant to evolve itself as a as a kind of political player outside its immediate surroundings. 
is it is it good to see Germany playing a more assertive role further afield? Well, I think you know we we will come everybody to uh, to help to solve any uh, misunderstanding or. Uh, the dispute, uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. You know that way, it doesn't work that way, and uh, uh, maybe Germany to see things in different what we see. I mean, we the biggest enemy in, 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 in our in the world is Iran, supporting of terrorism all over the world. I mean, they are creating uh, Hezbollah. Hezbollah, when coming now, is the largest threat not only to the Arab world but to everywhere. They are military more than uh, militia. Uh, you have al-Hajj al-Shaabi, which is the Iraq control Iran, uh, control Iran, Iraq. And you have al-Houthiyin, you know. I mean, the problem is um, we are not evaluating the facts on, on, you know, what's happening really. Sometimes we take the first person who come to us, or to you, I mean, you absorb and you assess, maybe you agree in their message. But if you go to the ground there and you see and take the opinion of everybody else, you will find that we are really, we are in a position and we are threatened, threatened by the arms of Iran, which is Hezbollah, Houthiyin and al hasht al-Shaabi. This is, I mean, they are interfering in our countries. And this is, I don't think Germany will accept anybody will interfere in Germany. You know, so, I mean, this is what we need really from, to activate the German or France to see the facts, truth. We don't need a support except the support of the reality. The, we need people to speak about that we, as United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, we are telling the truth and we know that, what's happening, you know, and we need, we need the German, you, you, your word is very important to us, very, very important to us. We need you to research, to study it. I'm not saying that you, you announce anything without knowledge, without knowing it. You make your study, make your research, visit our country, we'll sit with you, we'll let you sit with the, with the intellectual people, with the politician, with the government, to see documentation of facts, you know, what's happening on the GCC. This is what, we'll never tell you something like that. No, no, you have to see it yourself and then make your judgment. We don't want you to believe in a messenger, somebody, a messenger coming to you, and you say, oh, he's the first person came and he told us we are with that person. No. Oh, and I'm sure that the German will not do that. But just, I thought, you know, to, to see the ground is different than to read the paper. You spoke about the Iran and the fear um, against Iran. Do you think that Israel can be a partner against this uh, Iran thing that Iran want to have more influence in Arabic countries? Well. I mean, Iran controlling Lebanon and Syria already, and Yemen. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to push them from Yemen. Mm -hmm. we push them Yemen to support the Yemeni. I mean, they are already, you know, they are controlling Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, and Yemen. Four countries, Iran. And this is the gift from the Americans. Gift from Mr. Obama and uh, George Bush, unfortunately. They gifted this Iraq is the cradle of civilization, has been gifted, unfortunately, and given to a people which is pro-Iran, ruling the country. There is a Shia majority in Iran. Well, we didn't know that really. We didn't uh, count them num uh, num uh, one by one. Yeah. We don't count them, and there's a Shia as well. They are uh, uh, pro-Arab, they are Arabs. They are Arabs. They are Arabs, I mean, they're Shia. In the time of Saddam Hussein, a lot of Shia, most of his leader and the right hand, they are Shia. Yeah. We're not against Shia. We're not against Shia. We're against people who is bought by the Iranian. Whether they are Sunnah or Shia or Christian. But then you see that 
see there is a discrimination of Shia in Saudi, of Shia in Bahrain, and the, 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 no, no. They, they are all no, they are open to Iran because of, of the politics in, in the, their host countries. No, sir. If they, if they see Iran as heaven for them, Switzerland or Germany, so they can go to Iran. So it's not heaven for them. Huh? The, the, the Bahrain and Shia, they don't want to be, they don't want to live in a country, in a, in a Mullah country like, like Iran, but they fear obsessed in, 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 as being Shia in, as the majority in your country, but when you have a Sunni king, uh, who oppresses you, so you won't to, want to live un, uh, under the circumstances. That's the problem of Bahrain. No, sir. And so they are, are, are heading to, to Iran. I wish they, I wish they leave. I, personally, if I'm not happy about my country, United Arab Emirates, I will leave the next day. I will go, if I love Iran, I will go and live the, uh, in paradise. No one loves Iran. Yeah. Or they will go somewhere else. Why, why don't they come to you? Exactly. Why don't they go anywhere And else? you'll be in trouble if they come to you. <laughs> So why not, not give them uh, they religious have. freedom in, in, in Bahrain? They have their freedom like everyone, believe me, I know that. I have been there. Yeah, <laughs> but whom did, did you meet? Both parties? Yes. So what is the parties? I think it's, uh, they have to change the, the rulership. You cannot change the you rulership. Have, you, have to, you have to open the country up for, for uh, the right of, of the majority of, of, of the people. Yeah, but Iran, this is what Iran wants. They want to control, to take over Bahrain, like took over Lebanon. Yeah, maybe they will. We will not allow them. They want to do No, no, no one want, wants to allow it. But yeah. <coughs> yeah, this that is what happened. That will come if there will be not uh, political reforms. Or they are in Bahrain, the, uh, a lot of jobs. They are doctors in the hospital. They are nurses. They are, they are pilots. They are uh, ev in everywhere. And everywhere, but there is a, a small group. They want to be to touch Iran, to uh, Iran to uh, Bahrain to Iran. That's unacceptable because if we, as United Arab Emirates, we will not allow that because it's dangerous to us as well. It's a threat to my country, threat to Saudi Arabia, which we will not allow it. I mean, this is. A people group, not all the Shia, believe me, not all the Shia. Now we have new Shia. They are our brothers. We love them. They are my neighbors. Yeah, but they have the equal rights in, in, in Bahrain. They don't have the equal rights. The, everybody. That's, that's a question of human rights in Bahrain. Uh, sir, mm -hmm. sir, believe me. And I, I, I'm not defending Bahrain, but I have been there a few times. I don't know Bahrain that well. At least I've been three, four times. And I saw everybody, the taxi driver, I wrote in, in taxi, I do this, and I talk with them, and etc. And you find, I mean, all of them, nothing wrong. But there is a group everywhere. There is a group sometime, a people complaining. But some, you cannot convince everybody, sir. Even in Germany, this great country, democracy, everything you have, you cannot make every German happy, right? There, there is people opposition. I think that the question my colleague raised was uh, very interesting. What about the, the partnership with Israel? Is it uh, more important for you to work more closely together with uh, Israel regarding the conflict uh, with Iran? Listen, I'll tell you, Israel as a country. Israel, you know, whether we like it or not, they, are, they have their country. They are, they have their people, they have their democracy, they are protecting their borders. And we try to shake hand with them, but they refuse to shake hand with us. I don't know which year it was in Beirut, they met with King Abdullah. And King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia at that time, he was crown prince. He said, we want peace, we want oh, oh, Israel. Israel refused. 2002. 2002. He rejected the Israeli. But I mean, beneath the surface, uh both parties are already working together, I and mean, it's no secret. Which one? Which Saudi party? Arabia and Israel, for example. Well, I, I, I support that, personally. Okay. And I support. Why not? And I have a lot of friends of mine, Israeli, Jewish. They are great people to deal with them. And we have to live together. We have to live together in peace. Why we are creating this, uh, I mean, like, uh, secret, and we bluff each other, we talk a lot of nonsense. 
we live, the Palestinians should live, Israelis should live, and we have to, uh, to work together. And I was speaking with the President Carter once. I said, President Carter, he's my great friend. I said, let us make a conference in Budapest. Bring, we bring some Israeli, not government, Israeli people and the Palestinian people and general businessmen or whatever, and talk with them how we get them together. I sent a delegation from the University of Illinois there, how we can make peace. And I chose children in the school studying there from the university, you know, to go to university and school in Palestine and Israel. They went there and they found out that both the Israeli boys and girls and the Palestinian boys and girls in the school and university, they want to be together. Only the politician, which they are benefiting from the conflict, from both sides. If you ask me, and I want to make peace now, if it is in my hand, what's wrong? But Netanyahu will reject that, 100%. I don't know what's his policy. Sooner or later, we want. As I said, you know, we are not tap, We are not selling war. We are not buying wars. We are not creating a wars. We are creator of peace. This is what we learn in my country, my United Arab Emirates, and this is what we want to do. What about Turkey's regional role? Hmm? What about Turkey's regional role? <laughs> <laughs> I notice you have no investments there. I'm, just looking at uh, I, I'm, I'm scared to go. <laughs> <laughs> but have you ever? Uh, I've been several times. Uh, no, but have you ever invested there? I mean, 15, huh? Once upon a time, it would have looked like the most exciting investment destination in the region. So, yeah. It used to be, it, it used to be, but now if you look, you know, with the political issues mm -hmm. and decision of the president, even their currency went mm -hmm. to ground now. You know, them and the Iranian, unfortunately. We don't want anybody to be harmed, you know, the people in particular everywhere. But what about trade with Iran? UAE was one of the main trading partners of Iran for the US sanction, the heavy sanctions. Um, then Abu Dhabi stopped trade between Dubai and uh, Iran. What about? perspectives for renewing trade. But, uh, sir, you said Abu Dhabi stopped. We are one country. Yeah, but you know, in Dubai there were... Yeah, but we are one country, you know. Uh, we are, we are, we are one country, interest. and uh, it is, uh, we are in one boat, you know, and we have to accept that. And we love that. We, we export a lot now to China. They allow us to export to China, which is a good market. Are in China already? Yeah, all we are exporting. Uh, Mitsubishi allowed us because they have dispute between Japan and China, mm. and uh, we are the only distributor allowed to export to China, which is the only the four wheel drive the Pajero. Mm. But the problem we are not receiving the production from Japan, <laughs> not a lot. <laughs> You, you, but you don't profit from the opening of the Saudi market for female drivers uh, for supplying the Saudi market with foreign cars? Or? Definitely will benefit, provided they will allow us to export, because they have an agent as well there. Okay. Yeah, but I didn't think the agent have the, the number we have and the service we have in Dubai. Because we can, in my company, you know, we have variety of quality of cars, you know, not only the Mitsubishi, we have Bentley, we have McLaren, we have Bugatti, you know, all these expensive cars. And, you know, <coughs> maybe women would love to have this quality of cars. I don't think they will be interested to buy Lancer, Mitsubishi Lancer or something. Some of them, of course. I'm talking about... Number one is Mercedes. <coughs> Yes, yeah. yes, sir. <laughs> Although the, the Saudi economy is bigger than our economy, but I was told by the chairman of Mercedes-Benz in the UAE, we sell much more cars in the, 
in our market uh, than the Saudi market. We are in the Bentley, for example, just to give for your information, we are number one in the world selling Bentley. We are number one in McLaren and Bugatti to sell. Don't ask me where we are selling, okay? <laughs> and Pijero as well, number one in the world. But no question of where we are sending them. <laughs> Gentlemen, it is a pleasure. And I would like to thank my friend Abu Faisal for this gathering. This is an educational gathering to learn from you. And uh, it's a pleasure and I hope one day to visit us in my country and you will be my guest there. And uh, our ambassador, His Excellency, Ali will organize, coordinate, and you will be my guest there. And I want to plan for you to see the country and to sit with important people. I will not take you to government. <laughs> I will take you to our people, which is the intellectual, uh, professor in universities, uh, writers, etc., to sit with them, and and I will leave. Therefore, I don't uh, pressurize anybody, you know, <laughs> and let you ask them any question you want. Yes. <laughs> and really, it will be my honor and my pleasure to be a guest, uh, my guest there in my country. Yes. To see our theaters, to see our 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 our, our opera, or to see we have a museum. I mean, we have beautiful country. I, I I'm sure some of you have been there. Yeah. But you went there as a tourist, right? No, as a also. As a reporter. Okay, very good. This time will be different. <laughs> but this book, and I, I will be very interesting. <laughs> Please, gentlemen, if. Uh, uh, if you read this, the ad, uh, you know, is anybody listening? <laughs> Nobody listening. Still a valid question. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody answered me until now. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.